Hey guys, it's Jen. Welcome back to my channel. So today's video is highly requested and I'm going to be comparing Viking Cruise Line and Disney Cruise Line and I'm really glad that you're here. So some of you are shaking your heads because you're like, how do you even compare those two things? One is for families, one is adults only. You have to be 18 and up to even sail with Viking. But there are a lot of us, myself included, that do sail on the Disney Cruise Line without our kids. And you wanted to kind of know what the two experiences were like, how were they alike, how were they different. And I just did my full review. In fact, I put it up this morning of the Viking Ocean Experience over on the Joyful Living channel. So if you're interested in that video, I will put a link to it right here here. So I have been on now four Disney cruises and this was my first experience outside of the Disney Cruise Line. And like a lot of you, I was a little nervous because I had heard that Disney was the top of the top, you know, that anything else after Disney, I would feel disappointed. And so I, I thought, well, I don't know if that's true or not. So let's see what happens. So when we first uh, got on the ship, my expectations were not very high, I have to be honest with you. I kind of expected to be disappointed compared to Disney. I knew mom and I were gonna have a great time anyway, so I wasn't worried about it, but I really didn't expect it to be on par with Disney Cruise Line. I could not have been more wrong. With a couple of exceptions, I would rate Viking Cruise Line above Disney Cruise Line any day of the week. And for those of you that just unsubscribe from my channel, <laughs> please don't do that. I still love Disney Cruise Line. I would love to go on another Disney cruise sometime very, very soon. And I hope to do another Disney cruise, maybe even in 2020. But as far as the smaller ship, the luxury amenities, the quality of the food, Viking really won on almost every count. So let's start with the ship itself. Now, this was a very small ship, even compared to the smaller ships of the Disney Cruise Line. The last ship I was on with Disney was the Magic, and that was just a couple of months ago. And that's a small ship, but the Viking Sea was even smaller with only 900 passengers. And it definitely had a very elegant feeling. Now, of course, what you're missing is Disney. You're obviously not gonna see Mickey Mouse on a Viking cruise ship. Although I did see another Disney Vacation Club uh, family and uh, someone had made a hidden Mickey in the gift shop and I have a feeling it was them. But for the most part, you're not gonna see any, any Disney characters at all. But what you are gonna see is a lot of elegant artwork, you're going to see a lot of history. You're going to hear a lot of incredible music. What you are going to see around the ship is a lot of Nordic influenced artwork. They have a little history museum about uh, Vikings that was super interesting. You're going to have this feeling of, of sort of very high end luxury hotel. And that was my jam. I felt every bit as uh, pampered on the Viking cruise ship as I ever have on Disney and honestly the ship was in better shape. Every surface was perfectly polished. Everything was in perfect working order. Uh, the, the whole feel of it was, was far more grown up obviously than a Disney cruise, uh, but just very, very elegant. And for me, that worked great. Now I love the Disney cruise ships as well. I love all of the special Disney touches. So in that category, it's not like one is better or one is worse. I would say they're just very, very different, but you will not be disappointed with the quality and the elegance of your Viking cruise ship. The other thing I'd love to talk about is the food, and this is where Viking wins hands down. I, um, I like the food on the Disney Cruise Line. I don't always find it exceptional, um, with the exception of Apollo, uh, which I do feel like is always an exceptional experience. I don't think the Disney Cruise Line food is phenomenal. I think it's good. I found the food on the Viking cruise ship to be phenomenal. Uh, there was a sushi chef. They had special uh, crepe Suzette bar one night. They had an Italian buffet one night. The head chef was around. You could chat with him. Um, just the quality of the food, a lot more fresh fruit and vegetables than what you see on a Disney cruise ship. Again, I think that's because it's a much smaller ship. The preparation was always really good. The, the, our servers and all of the restaurant. Now you don't have what you get on Disney, you know, where your servers come with you 
night after night, the same servers. And you also don't have assigned dining. You can dine whenever you want, which I personally prefer. Uh, but I, I just, the it's just the quality and the taste of the food was better on Viking than on Disney. And again, it's not that the Disney Cruise Line food is bad, Viking was better. The buffet was not as extensive, obviously, because again, it's a smaller ship. But again, I would say the quality of the food in the buffet was much better. Uh, I also got to have a lot more like specialty teas and coffees and hot cocoa and things like that, as well as wine, because all of those things are included on a Viking cruise where they are an upcharge on Disney. So that's another reason I really liked the, the uh, food experience better was because of what was included. Also, bottled water is included on Viking. Of course, it isn't. With Disney and I love that. Just, just how many more things were included was really quite lovely. Now let's compare the spas because I do love me some rainforest room, especially the one on the Disney Dream that overlooks the ocean. It is such a spectacular experience, but it does cost extra to access the rainforest room. On the Viking Sea, we had something similar called the Thermal Suite. Now it was interior, so we didn't have views, but you had a beautiful pool where you could turn on the current and swim laps against the current. You had a jacuzzi, you had a uh, steam room, and then you had the Nordic room, which had snow on the ceiling and on the floor. And it was so good for uh, just your circulation, I guess it's supposed to be good for, to do the, the circuit, which I did almost every day. And on the Viking Sea, all of that was included. So if the rainforest room on the Disney um, ships is kind of where you love to be, this would be your equivalency to that. And it's all free of charge. And also it was never crowded. Nine times out of 10 when I was in there, I was completely alone. And it was uh, just a lovely space. I loved even like their women's locker room. They had a private steam room and a cold plunge just for women. I'm assuming they had the same thing on the guy's side. Uh, I did not partake of any of the spa services, so I can't compare those. Of course, I'm always happy with the spa on the Disney Cruise Lines, um, but I can tell you that just like the overall being in the spa was amazing. The one thing I would give to Disney in this category is the fitness room. Um, there is a better fitness room and a better running track on the Disney cruise ships, but again, that's just because it's a little bit larger of a running track, and um, yeah, in, in that category, I am going to give that to Disney. All right, let's move on to entertainment. Of course, this will not surprise you. Disney does still win in the entertainment category. You really cannot beat in my mind. I, I don't know how there could be a cruise line that does better entertainment on board than Disney. However, Viking really surprised me. I had for some reason, I had heard that it was maybe cheesy or it wasn't very good, but I could I could not have been happier with the entertainment. Everything from the uh, their singers and like the Broadway performers to the nightclub performers to the uh, the pianist and the string orchestra, musicians all over the place. There was live music on this ship so much of the time, and all of the musicians were so incredibly talented, and I was very very happily surprised with the level of entertainment. Now moving on to things like the excursions. Now, Viking does have an included excursion every single day. And I would say with Viking Cruise Line, the point of the, the cruise is the excursions. Whereas with Disney, the point of the cruise is more the sailing itself. Like I know many people that will do a Disney cruise and won't even go into ports of call. With Viking, they really want you to be learning and immersing yourself in the different cultures. And in that regard, it's a very different kind of cruise. This is not a cruise you're going on just to cruise. You're there because you're seeing things and you're going places. And the ports of call were numerous. We were in a different port of call every day of our trip. And I loved that. Now, maybe it's because my last Disney cruise, and I'll put a link to those videos right here. We ended up with four at sea days, but I was kind of done with at sea days. Sailing away every night, sailing through the night, and then arriving at a different destination every day was just lovely. And I really, really enjoyed the excursions. I loved all the education education about the excursions. We had history lectures and political lectures. And as someone who loves to learn about places that I'm not from, I thought Viking was so intentional about that in a way that I don't really see Disney being. So definitely Viking wins in that category. The overall experience on Viking was definitely less stressful than a Disney cruise. 
far less people. I felt like there was a far better ratio of staff to customers. Um, there was never, for instance, a wait to, to get any help from guest services. Uh, the guest services area was kind of laid out as, as uh, desks, and there was typically at least one, if not more people, literally waiting to answer your questions. Now, if you've ever been on a Disney cruise, you know that guest services typically has a long line, and although they're very helpful, there is a long line to get that help. And that is my other big um, win for Viking as opposed to Disney. We never waited in any lines. I, I'm trying to think, other than maybe one day getting off the ship, we didn't wait in line when we got on the ship. We didn't wait in line when we got off the ship, which I couldn't even believe, even like the customs process. Everything about this uh, experience was so stress-free and and more intimate and we really did feel more like we were the private guests of someone's really beautiful yacht instead of um, kind of a cog in the wheel which sometimes on a Disney cruise with as many people as there are um, that's kind of a little bit lacking so do I still love Disney Cruise Line? Yes, of course. At any time I'm gonna sail with my family, Disney Cruise Line is still the way we're gonna go. Viking, as I said, does have an 18 and up only uh, you know, policy, so you can't even take your kids under 18 on Viking. But if you were looking for an alternative to Disney for your next vacation, and you were wondering if you should take a chance on another cruise line, I can tell you without a doubt that Viking is the way to go. Oh. One more thing, a lot of you asked about cost. My mom and I, for our 10 night cruise with everything included, uh, including our excursions, paid just over $6,000, including airfare. So if you compare that to Disney, you're not that far off the mark. And I felt like the quality of what we got was much, much better. And also the bill when I got off, off the ship was much, much smaller. Love Disney, will always sail Disney, but if you're looking for another cruise line to try, I cannot recommend Viking Cruise Line enough. Put your comments below, I would love to answer them. Please don't unsubscribe because I didn't say Disney was my favorite cruise line, but Disney, I still love you. I hope you're having a great day, no matter what, have fun, be good to each other, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.